Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Our subject today is a preheater, a very useful device. Uh, this one is a, the name that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, model M853A. And it has on on off switch, uh, a knob and a button. That's all we need on a preheater. The heat plate, as you can see, not very big but perfect for the ECMs, at least Subaru ECMs. It fits perfectly, it, it's awesome. <laughs> um, now, why would you need a preheater? Usually if you do need a preheater, you're working on big, chi uh, big chips. And that includes mainly um, GPUs and uh, the boards that are designed to sink a lot of heat, uh, boards that will get hot, the, the multiple layer boards, fake, fake boards, uh, especially if you have to desolder big chips out of those. But even working with, um, you know, replacing the uh, connectors on the GPU uh, or any, any through hole component on the big, on the GPU, uh, board is going to be challenging. So a uh, preheater is going to improve your uh, soldering quality. Even if you don't necessarily need the preheater, you can uh, do just like on this board over here, right? We removed the, um, the uh, SSD chip, right? And that requires full blast, full temperature, right? No nozzle and, uh, you know, and a few, quite a few seconds of blasting that temperature, right? If I had a preheater then, I would just heat it up to about maybe 150 degrees, and then I don't have to use full blast, I don't have to use 500 degrees, because it's not necessarily good for either the board or the chip to, to treat it with such extreme temperature. On the other hand, you don't want to keep the temperature too low just pushing heat into the board and everything around it um, and waiting for the for the chip to, to heat up, basically roasting the rest of the board. So in my case, normally I don't, I wouldn't necessarily need a preheater and you probably don't need a preheater either, but it will greatly improve the quality of soldering and make soldering easier. So I definitely recommend having something like this. And in this case, I paid for this one $79.55, so not even 80 bucks. That includes shipping, taxes, all of that, all right? Uh, so I'm pretty happy with the price. Well, uh, maybe it's not, you know, it's not 20 bucks. It's almost 100 bucks, but this is uh, a pretty heavy, pretty sturdy machine. It's completely silent. It makes no sounds normally, or what I expected, uh, was that there's going to be a big fan just like in other station uh, or a pump and it's just going to be pumping uh, air hot air through here uh, but it's not it's just a heat plate and it just naturally because you know hot air is going to be going up so it naturally heats whatever you put over here and i don't i'm not sure what the temperature uh range is because I gave it just one test uh, a little while ago, meaning a couple days ago, as soon as I got it, and it's been waiting for the use case. Right now, I don't really have a use case, but I will attempt to remove the CPU from this board. Now, this is just big enough that it's too big for a header alone. So for this job, preheater is required. Without the preheater, there's no way you're gonna remove that chip. Now the same will go for the project that I actually wanna do. And LGA 51, what was it? Um, well, LGA CPU. Um, as you can see, the number of pins, huge right so desoldering that and soldering new one 
requires preheater. There's no way to do it without the preheater. And yes, I tried. I tried many things using just hotter station. And I was thinking of using this one as a preheater, basically heat this one from the bottom, right? And this one from the top. Um, but I never really actually got around to it because I didn't really have an idea how to how to actually build it. I was thinking of building like putting some pipe and, and some larger nozzle and you know like building a structure and stuff but when I looked around in Home Depot and you know Lowe's and stuff and I just kind of calculated what I have to buy just parts let alone tools and, and stuff it, that would be pretty expensive endeavor and time consuming obviously this I got for less than 80 bucks and I think it's gonna work so now let's see I forgot to turn on the scope I don't think I'll be able to switch to scope now oh I can okay perfect um, so uh, let's try this Well, we'll see. Um, it's hard to catch it because it's not exactly the shape that you can install here. Uh, I will have to just kind of drill through these and uh, give myself a little more options of, of uh, holding the board, of um, mounting the board. Right now it doesn't look that great. Um, but We'll see. This is test number one. Um, I would like, actually, I would like the CPU to be more in the middle here. Yeah. But the reason it's here is so I can hold it here. <laughs> okay, well, let's just work with this and see where it gets us. So, how do we operate it? Turn it on. It's set to... Um, Okay, so this is what we set it to. Minimum is 50 and maximum is 400. Oh, you don't want to preheat to 400. Mm, let's do 190 degrees on the preheat. And press the button and that shows you the actual temperature. Okay, so looks like 190 degrees set on the preheater translates into roughly 50 degrees on the CPU. Now, the CPU is at 50 degrees. Um, I would like it to go a little higher. I mean, it's better than nothing. That, sh that alone probably should allow us to dislodge this CPU. Because it's not only the temperature, the nominal temperature that we have right now that matters, but uh, once we start heating it up, it will not uh, release, it will not lose that heat as quickly uh, when, it's, when it's heated up. But I want to set a little higher temperature. Uh, let's do 220. Um, well, 230. 230 exactly and let's see what temperature that will translate to it's already 51 52 okay I don't, I'm not sure what this is measuring which uh, or where that temperature is being measured but it looks like we get on the hot plate, right? The hottest point is here at uh, 180. 
and it fluctuates meaning it goes up and down up and down but roughly it, it's not even at hundred it's 200 degrees so it must be measuring at the bottom of the plate uh, close to the uh, heater and this is the top of the plate so the temperature is slightly lower so something to know about this already is that this temperature is gonna show you um, a higher temperature than you actually get in reality our CPU is at 60 degrees now so 230 degrees gives us 60 degrees on the CPU so that should already be enough I would believe and we're gonna use full blast and full temperature let me see if I can record it on the on the phone okay it's recording three four five okay let's do it let's see what it's gonna do Not sure what to use for well I'll use this for lifting it the chip pickup uh, but I'm not sure what to use to just kind of tap on it to make sure it is it is uh, melted I guess I'll, maybe I'll just use this all right moment of truth
<clears throat> Alrighty, I definitely, because I felt it, I definitely ripped some pads. Um, I'm not sure if that was a patience issue or temperature issue, meaning because it dislodged on one side, no problem, and on the other side, it wouldn't. Right here. Right? Come on, focus. Oh, you piece of... There. Um, this side over here. Right? So I, I felt it when I pulled on it. I felt it. I should have released it. I should have let it go and conclude that it's not hot enough. But instead, I just held it up and just started blasting here. And I used a little bit of force. But a little bit of force, these are uh, these pads are really easy to to rip. So we definitely ripped some pads, and I can see it slightly over here already. Yeah, there's definitely some pads ripped. So this was definitely not successful, but look at it this side, uh, from this angle. <laughs> uh, this was not possible to do, or this is not possible to do with hotter alone. So without the preheater, there's no way to do it. So I had it set to 230. I think the, the better temperature in this case would be maybe 250, 280. Um, and perhaps just keep the hotter a little bit longer. Unfortunately, I couldn't read uh, too well on my on my phone what the actual temperature was. I thought I was reading 180, so that was not not enough, but I couldn't even see the first number, so I didn't know if it was 180 or 280 or 380, I don't know. My temperature on the um, the hotter was set to 300 or uh, 400 at full uh, sorry, 500. <laughs> 500 at full blast so theoretically i should be able to to get this heated up to 350 400 no problem but i don't think it went up that high and judging you know by the ripping and um and how much solder is left on the on the chip and what it looks like it was definitely not heated high enough we definitely mess this one up but now we know <clears throat> now we know what to set it for and it's also a um you know patience um issue you do need to be patient you don't you can't you can't speed it up right there's there's no way to speed it up but okay that seems to be working just fine um the machine is working perfectly. Uh, the temperatures are off by, well, they are a little off. So just mind that. Uh, but overall, I'm very happy. I wouldn't be able to do this with just hot air. Very nice. Maybe not perfect job. And I was actually thinking, so what's wrong with this one? It's not the CPU that is shorted. Uh, it's the it's the PCH and unfortunately PCH is embedded in in this big chip on uh, on this and uh, on Surface Pro 5 even though the the chip is even smaller not only PCH but EC is um, embedded there so the only external component component is the SAM chip and it's on the other side of the board so Surface Pro 5 not very repairable Surface Pro 4 very much so um, alrighty, we did it. <clears throat> that is a preheater for you. Uh, I definitely recommend this one. As you can see, it just works. It's it's simple. It's easy to operate. It's relatively light. It's not too heavy, but it it's it's got its weight. Definitely, there's a lot of aluminum, and uh, from what I see from the outside, there is a transformer. It's not powered with the. Uh, pulse um, you know uh, power converter it's a regular and um, transformer which is pretty cool because it shouldn't be uh, I don't know how much power does it have does it say here 
450 watts. Uh, it's rated power, so it probably uses half of that. So not a lot of power in this machine, but it gets the job done perfectly. It's still pretty hot, so it'll take a while to cool down, but it worked perfectly. I definitely recommend this one. Alrighty, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you found this um, interesting and informative. And I shall see you guys in the next one.